anarchy, control, and witchcraft. Let's do a few definitions. Definition of anarchy. Lack of obedience to an authority. Insubordination. Lack of, of, of obedience to an authority. Insubordination. And it is not by mistake, this is intentional. It's a demonic, it's one of the most demonic spirits there is because it comes in and acts humble and look like it's for you and talks like it's for you and gives like it's for you but on the inward parts it's full of dead men's bones on the inward part it's full of disobedience to authority to delegated authority the spirit of Jezebel she is nothing like her daughter Jezebel finds a king to come alongside of and because that king lacks the intestinal fortitude to lead, he allows Jezebel to take the lead. So it can be a king, it can be a political leader, it can be a pastor, it can be all kinds of people. Jezebel is just not a female. The spirit of Jezebel is not just a female. It could be male also. The thing, about, uh, the thing about it when it is a male and it has this spirit or he has this spirit, he cannot live long. It's impossible, First Lady Jones, for him to live long. He develops heart issues. If he operates long enough in, with the spirit of Jezebel, it will literally kill his dead minister well. What usually happens when a man operates in the spirit of Jezebel, he is transitioned from Jezebel to Absalom. He, he meets people at the gates. What's your issue? I can take care of it. You don't need to bother past. Oh, they're too busy. Let, what you just tell me, I'll get it done for you. And before long, the the delegated authority loses influence and don't even know it. Because what was Jezebel became Absalom in a man. Now the thing about the spirit of Jezebel when it's in a woman, it can go for years. Oh, excuse me, decades. It can live a lifetime in a woman. Ah. You let that marinate, just let it bathe. It can live a lifetime in a woman. It is usually, just the spirit of Jezebel is usually the birth child of an individual who has been rejected. Usually from childhood. This young girl might have gone through something traumatic, detrimental, something that mentally stunted her growth while she was a little girl, and she stopped growth there. So in order to stop from being rejected, she now has learned the art of DIM, the acronym, D-I-M, DIM. Domination, intimidation, and manipulation. The spirit of Jezebel is a very seductive spirit. When you look in scripture, when you look in 1 Kings, 1 Kings 18, it talks about this spirit to the fact that Elijah had challenged he had challenged the prophets of Baal. They met down at the mountain and Elijah challenged all 850. 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the grove. And they all belonged to Jezebel. 
They all operated in sexual immorality. It is said, we know that through scripture, Jezebel was the princess, was a princess to the king Ethbal. He was a pagan king and a worshiper of Baal and Molech. So they were deep into not only animal sacrifice, but human sacrifice. Some of you might not have heard it, but they talk about the white hot hands of Molech. They would heat the flame underneath the hands of Molech until Molech's stone hands were red hot or blue hot, they turned white hot. Then they would take children while the hands were white hot and set the child on the white hot hands of Molech and offer those children up to Molech. In an excruciating, an excruciating way to be sacrificed. And then, if that wasn't enough, after the sacrifice, there was usually uh, 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 priestesses who were prostitutes. And their worship weren't lifted up hands, but their worship was open legs. They were literally whosoever will let him come or her or whatever. And that was their worship. So now you see a pagan princess coming into natural and spiritual union with the king of Israel, literally an unholy alliance. But Jezebel always seeks out a man who is weak. And if us brothers that are here today don't know it, women can see far better than we can. You can have big muscles, a ripped stomach, and you can have the look, and they can see right through it, little boy. You can walk by, you can walk by a woman, and they say, uh uh uh, uh. there's something twisted on the inside of him. Homosexual. Oh, he got that and they can see it. And this alliance with Ahab and Jezebel was unholy. Ahab should have never been a king. And Jezebel never should have been a queen. But because they met and Ahab couldn't lead, she naturally assumed the role of king. Not queen, she assumed the role of king. He, wa he wouldn't be king, so she became king. When he had an issue because he wanted Nabal's vineyard, which was next to the, the king's uh, uh, kingdom, he went to Nabal and said, let me, let me buy this vineyard from you. And Nabal, he said, no, no, this, this has been in my family forever. This was passed down to me. And I'm going to pass it down to my kids. So because he wasn't king, he literally went back pouting, probably crying, yes. probably dry heaving, <sighs> fell in the bed. And Jezebel said, well, what's wrong with you? He wouldn't, neighbor wouldn't give me the vineyard. So <sighs> what are you going to do about it? Jezebel, what are you going to do about it? Because I, the king, couldn't get what I wanted from him. What are you going to do about it? She had him killed. Got, got Ahab what he wanted. And literally became the king in the nation to where the people did not fear Ahab. They feared her. And please don't think this spirit died. It's alive and well in the church. And it seeks to steal delegated authority from leadership. And it poses the face that I'm with you. And the, the damnable thing about this spirit, it will be the biggest giver. But yet the biggest hypocrite. It would try to be everything, but hate everything about the leader. 
Jezebel seeks out the weak minded. It seeks out the poor. It seeks out the easily controlled. Uh huh. It does. It seeks out who? Those I can control. Control. The situation of being under the regulation. Notice that second word domination or command of another. You can be preacher, pastor all day, but yet you'll have individuals who will not do anything until they first get direction yes. from their pastor. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You can wear the collar and the cloak and the, the cassock and the shamir and the tippet and you can do everything. You can slap folk down with oil and pray for them in the womb of the morning and lay all day for days and weeks for their deliverance but they still won't respect you or nor uh, or submit to you because you are not their pastor. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They'll get their leadership huh, from the pew. Pastors always talk about pew pastors. But a lot of good talking about it does. You have to deal with it. If you don't deal with it, it will deal with you. And it will kill you if you don't deal with it first. <sighs> Paragraph one says the spirit of Jezebel is pious, puffed up with pride, blatantly disregards delegated authority. It works contrary to the laws of spiritual protocol, refuses to submit. Now, it'll submit in word, but it won't submit in heart. You give direction and instruction, even if it steps on toes, and their actions will prove whether Jesse is in operation or not. You can set it to your clock. Tick tock. Well, we go. It's gonna show his head. You deal with it. It's gonna show its head, its face, its butt, everything. It's gonna show itself. Once it is confronted, it just can't sit there and just fold his arms. It has to. Therefore, you have to put in governmental structures and protocols in place. Because where there is lack, where there is a lack of governmental structure and protocol, there's chaos. And if there is no structure, she can work under covert and clandestine plans. You, you cannot identify whether it's her or not. You can only speculate. But once things are set in order, once there's order in the court and kingdom of our God, it will show up. It will. Oh, yes. Refuses to submit and instead rallies for the authority and the influence rightfully belonging to God's appointed leadership. The Jezebel spirit operates through both males and females and appeals to the iniquity of the heart, often utilizing those overtaken by the spirit of Ahab to fulfill its wishes and desires. Failure to oblige or obey this spirit will cause it to retaliate violently. Jezebel's spirit hates the prophetic. It hates holiness and it hates righteousness and it plots and plans the demise of delegated authority. Now it operates in false prophecy, yes, yes, prophecy. in false holiness, yes. in false or pseudo righteousness. And this is why so many people are confused by it. Let me make you a little bit more confused before I explain myself. You can have a false prophet who is accurate and a true prophet who misses it. Now figure that out. Say it again. You can have a false prophet who is accurate 
and a true prophet, Brother Mike, who misses it. So what's the difference? The difference is how they get their information. See, you can get your information if you tap into the realm of the spirit. Everybody is part spirit, spirit, soul, body. You can go through illegal methodologies and means to tap into the spirit through a literal back door. You can come through the back door and get info. I can tap in illegally into the spirit realm about you, Sister Dorf, and get information about you. And usually they'll say crazy stuff, they'll call you out, tell you your address. Your bank account. Like I heard one preacher say, if somebody is calling out their bank account, I'm gonna be in the back. Six, seven, five. Could you repeat that last digit? Seven, eight. What bank was that? Yeah, bank of America. But us, because we so hungry and we don't care where the word comes from, we just want a word, First Lady Jones. We, oh, that's it. Thank you. I'm out the back door. I'm trying to hit your bank. What does your bank account have to do with anything? But I got true information. I call out your name, your middle name, and your last name. I call out your, your, your cousin there. I called out blue who in jail and black who run in the street. What does that have to do with anything? Is that glorifying God? No. Paul and Silas, <laughs> they were in a place and met up with a girl filled with the spirit of divination. And she did she not prophesy right? These are they who have the word of God. These are the representatives of, of God. And, and, and what? Paul didn't catch it right off. Paul didn't catch it right off. But after so long, he got irritated with them. Uh -huh. And said, in the name of Jesus, you come out. And that self same out, that spirit came out. And you would think people would be glad. But they were mad because they lost their economic basis. Please don't, don't misunderstand me, folk. We'll use you. Regardless to how you're getting the information. If they can make some money right in the church. And because they were accurate. They got beat. They got thrown in jail. Yes, they, <laughs> they caused jailhouse rock. Oh, yeah. They caused the earth to shake. Mm -hmm. They sang and praised and the prisoners heard them. Yes, so what the enemy went, meant for bad, God meant it for. Oh, yes. We don't always understand what he's doing when he's doing it or when he's allowing it. But at the end of the day. It's going to work for my good. It don't feel good. It don't look good. But it's going to work for my good. It hurts like a doctor's scalpel to your soft flesh. It hurt, but after it heals up. After it seals up. It's going to be worth it. But you can have true prophets in bad atmospheres. In demonic atmospheres that the atmospheres are so cluttered and clustered with the demonic, but yet those who are releasing the demonic is dressed in church clothes, yes, sir. wearing church suits and ties and gaiters and big hats and knit suits and, oh, yeah. and 12 inch heels and all this stuff. Yeah. Missionaries who are missionless. Right. Yes, Lord. Got habits, but got a habit. Preachers right. oh, yes. who are preaching, but need deliverance. Yes, 
prophesying, but prophesying out green smoke in my mind because they're polluted and corrupted. They corrupt hands on and these hands laid on them first. And you can bring true prophets in and they can get bogged down. I know I'm talking true, Sister Harris. Ain't that right? You could have spent all night in prayer and come to a house that don't want nothing. Where Jesse is sitting, uh -huh. looking, yeah. and her eunuchs right. and her daughters, her actaliahs yeah. are in the place, okay. and they intentionally stare at you yeah. and won't move yeah. and won't clap yeah. and intentionally try to block the atmosphere, right. and God will shut you down and say they don't want nothing, yeah. and I'm not gonna cast my pearls yeah. to a bunch of swine yeah. who don't want nothing. Who ain't a grown up in a, and who are not my seed, but are the seed of Satan. Yes, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, I shut my true prophets down. There's many times. We've gone into intercessory prayer and I get choked up. Times I can't even breathe and I have to hand it off to my wife and and she goes forth in times where she'll get to start and her throat would seize up and feel like somebody laying on her she'll hand it to me and I'll go forth or sister Doris or somebody who God has laid on and won't allow to be <laughs> that's why the enemy likes to divide husband and wife Because if he can get them divided in singular, if I can shut her down, she can't hand off to him. But because when I shut down, I can hand off to her. And when she gets shut down, she can hand off to me. Uh, and with Jesus and he the Holy Ghost on the inside, a threefold cord is not easily broken. You can try it. You can release it. You can carry it. You can do what you want. But when he the Holy Ghost raises up, raise up, if he that is in me, then he that is in the world. Understand Satan is not God's equal. He sure is not. Dark light, black, white, first, last, gold, stop, angelic host, demonic host, Satan, God. Y'all missed it. Satan, Michael. God is so holy, it's an insult for him to have a contention with what he's created. So as much credit as we give to Satan, he is a dog on a leash. Yeah, okay. I'm just going yeah, yeah, yeah. Else is <laughs> And we cry, oh yeah, he done did. And he, and he, and greater is he in me. Utilize your power. That's all the enemy wants you to do is to begin to pronunciate. And open up your mouth and tell the devil how bad he's been and how much victory he's got and how he hurt me and how he messed me up and how he's got his foot on my neck. The enemy is under our feet. Where he belongs on your worst day, he is under your feet. You can be crying bitter tears. <laughs> Satan, you are still under my feet. With tears wrapping around up under my chin, you are still under my feet. With an unexpected pill, you are still under my feet. With Jesse looking like she's got the victory, you, her, and everybody which is still. Under my feet. The victory was determined 
Brother Marlon, before the beginning started, he declared the end of our existence from the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. Go back to life. Jesus didn't wait to. God, I didn't mean to go this way. But Jesus didn't wait to Adam and Eve. Eve got tricked and Adam said he didn't wait. To, 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 to decide to come through 42 generations, scripture said he was the lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. Tamika, he, he was already slain. He was already slain before he said, Let there be light. Before there was an in the beginning, which is relative to get you to understand your starting point. That's not where he started. That's where we started. He was before the beginning. He existed in eternity past, eternity future, and eternity present. And it's all the same to him. Y'all throwing me off. The other thing is witchcraft. It's the art of practice of a witch. It's sorcery, it's magic. In, in, in America, I determine it to be syncretism. Syncretism is the mixing of religions. You know, like they have now Islam, Christian and Islam, and an and, and intentional uh, intent to pervert the ways of God, which is literally saying you can come up any way you want. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the gospel of inclusion means you can live like, yeah, that too. You can live any way you want, but at the end of the day, you're still going to make it in. No standard. No standards at all. The old landmarks moved. What was right before is now wrong. And what was wrong before is now right. Just live any way you want to live. Because at the end of the day, you go into heaven. The, the devil is alive. Biggest trick of the enemy. But what also syncretism is a lot of times what, what we were taught by the demonic. See, you, you just don't come up with stuff. Right. We look at all these movies that are coming out. They just didn't. Mm -mm. They just don't come up with it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Stephen King exposed that. He said, my, my, the movies I create, I just don't come up with them. Those are my nightmares. Why are they my nightmares? So scary are the things that the enemy torments me at night with, and I just make money off of it. But he never said it prevented his nightmares. He still have them. But he making money. That's what witchcraft is. Witchcraft in the church is more devious. Witchcraft in the church would come in. He'd sit in the back. Move his way up to the middle. Find his way somewhere in the front. And begin to call folk to them. How you doing? What's going on? I was just looking at you. Uh, 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 how you doing? No. Mm -mm. I, mm. <laughs> the Lord said there's something going on. Mm. Tell me. What you need to know for? And now here you are. Well, no, ain't, ain't nothing. Oh. <laughs> it is! Gotcha. Now I'm going to make you my eunuch. I'm going to emasculate you. I'm going to teach you how not to think. I'm going to spiritually castrate you where you can't reproduce after the God class. You're going to reproduce after my class. Jezebel seeks people who don't want to think for themselves. Well, it looks for the lazy, uh -huh. the spiritually poor. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looks for the ones who refuse to contend for the faith, yeah. who refuse to get in God's face until God 
answers. Yes. Yes. That's who Jezebel gleams mm -hmm. from. Jezebel is dangerous because when new folk come in, mm -hmm. before they can greet leadership, hey, how you doing? Come yeah, yeah. What's your name? Well, give me your number because, you know, when stuff go on, I like to tell you yeah. who, who appointed you communications liaison. Yeah. <laughs> who said you were the welcoming committee? Yeah. And folk glean to the spirit yeah. and, and when they are not the type of people who are easily controlled, instead of dealing with that spirit week in and week out because they throw the evil eye on you and get to shaking it. <clears throat> They'd rather leave. The devil show sure is a lie, but that's the truth. They'd rather leave than to have to deal with that person who was letting that spirit operate in them because of an issue that was unresolved from childhood. <coughs> so, paragraph two. There are two distinct manifestations of the spirit of Jezebel spoken of in scripture. The first, round, the first found in 1 Kings is assigned to prophets. The other reference is found in the book of Revelation and is assigned to masquerade as a prophet. Let's deal with that. Jesse has her prophets. God raises up the spirit of Elijah to deal with the prophets of the grove and the Baal who ate at Jezebel's table. And one interpretation, I, I heard that, that literally to eat at Jezebel's table means that you had to sexually indulge her. So, so you have 850 male prophets who have indulged themselves to become unionized with her. So they literally become part of her. But in Revelations 2.20, God has an issue, I, I think, against Thyatira. She said, or he, God said, that I know your works, I know your deeds, I know all that you've done, but I have an issue with you. Because you suffer that which Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to live. Yeah, she prophesied right. But she calls herself a prophetess. But God has not validated her calling. Because under her prophetic title, she enslaves. She destroys. And she literally kills those that come up under her covering. You literally become one or two things. You become her daughter, which is Athaliah, or you become her eunuch. You become her daughter, or you become her eunuch. So what's the difference? Spiritual daughters of Jezebel become at the lie. At the lie was worse than the mama. Because the mama needed a king to come alongside of. At the lie doesn't need a king to come alongside of. At the lie kills the seed royale. And she becomes the leader. Any seed that would dare take the throne, she will kill it. She doesn't even give it a chance to come out of childhood. She just kills it dead. But Atali is not as prevalent as number two, 
where she produces slave-like servants called eunuchs. Eunuchs, again, we'll read that in a minute. Eunuchs have been emasculated. It literally means their ability to reproduce have been cut to where they are now docile. They can have big muscles, but they're soft. They don't want to fight. They're non-aggressive, so they will be over, over harems, or they will be political officials who are easily manipulated and controlled. That's what a eunuch is. Again, I just talked to you about Atalai and what she does. A eunuch, a castrated man, or in the realm of the spirit, a castrated man or woman, especially one formerly employed by oriental rulers as a harem guard or palace official. I want y'all to listen to this quick video. This is how she creates a but God bless you, I'm Julius Clark. I want to spend just a few minutes talking about the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel knows how to make eunuchs, to make her own followers. I want to spend a moment and I want to talk about this. How does the Jezebel spirit make eunuchs or followers out of people? Now we know from the from the from the Bible that that there is such a thing as a Jezebel spirit. We understand about the control, we understand about the manipulation, but how would Jezebel target you? How could the spirit of Jezebel get you to submit to her even when you're in a local church someplace? Let me give you some of her tools. Now, now some of the things that I'm going to talk to you about, it took me 25 years to discover. Maybe you, are, maybe you already know these things, maybe you don't. And, and hopefully, and I pray this will happen, that the things that I say to you today on this broadcast, that God will give you even more, and you can share it with me by email. One of the things that I've noticed about the spirit of Jezebel, she has to create some sort of a tie, some sort of a bond between her and her victims. And so what Jezebel is really good at, and she's really good at this, what I call probing. She'll probe you. She'll like circle around you looking for that door, that gateway, so that she can come in and grab something in you to create this bond between, between you and her. For example, have you ever heard this before? Are you alright? Are you okay? I just feel like there's just something wrong and I'm not quite sure what it is. So what is, what is Jezebel trying to do? Jezebel's trying to look for that hurt, something that hurts you. Maybe it was in your childhood, or maybe it was something recent. Maybe your, maybe your husband left you, abandoned you. Maybe your boyfriend abandoned you. Uh, maybe something, ha your parents did something to you. I mean, something happened that hurt you. Maybe someone insulted you, or you lost your job. Who knows what, it could be a myriad of things. The point is, it's something that says you can grab onto. She's looking for that, 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 that hurt, that pain. It's always the same, whether it's a hurt or a wound. It could also be uh, something you're very sorrowful about, something you're very concerned about. It could be something you're afraid about, insecure about, but she's looking for that. Now, here's the thing. If she finds it, she'll latch onto it and focus on it, because here's what happened. She'll say, oh, that was so terrible that that happened to you. I mean, that's so awful. And I've even seen the Jezebel spirit begin to even pray and, and, and put, put, put her arms around you and weep with you over your pain. So instead of Jezebel pointing you to Jesus and getting you to cast all your cares on Jesus who cares for you, what she'll do, she'll say, explain it to me. Let, me. let me hear all about it. And so here's what you do. You start pouring out your heart. And, and instead of her pointing you to Jesus or taking all those pains and leaving them on the altar, what she'll do then is she'll begin to make you feel like that she can identify with your pain. So, she, so that spirit is really 
um, taking the place of the Lord because he himself bore our infirmities. Amen. So what Jezebel does is she, she, um, she in order to create a eunuch out of you, she's got to find that pain, she's got to find that hurt, and then she makes you feel like that, that finally now Jezebel or this person understands me more than any, anybody else. So she looks for hurts and wounds. She looks for pain. She might even look for something that you love. Perhaps uh, maybe you love you, you have a love for a particular person or a child or something. And, uh, and so Jezebel will, will begin to see, okay, you've got that love. So, and that love has maybe been violated. So what she'll do, she'll use that. Anything that she possibly can to connect with you, that's what she's going to do. Now, if your faith is in Jesus and you look to him, he's the author and finisher of your faith. You don't need her. Then what will happen is that those, all those doors are closed. Because, see, no minister should draw you unto that minister. Every minister of the gospel of Jesus should point you to Jesus. He's the author of the of faith. Okay, now watch this. We've got to go on from here. Eunuchs draw their strength from Jezebel. They draw their strength. And, you know, um, the Bible says, let the weak say that I'm strong. You know, we can feed on the word that makes us strong. We can hang around with, with other strong brothers and sisters. But what Jezebel will do is she'll make you feel like that you have no strength outside of her. So now if you're, you need to catch yourself with this because if that's happening to you, if, in other words, if, you're, if, you're, if you don't feel strong because this particular person's not around you, then something's wrong with that because you should be drawing your strength from the Holy Ghost. You should be drawing your strength from the Word of God, not from some person that prays for you or witnesses to you or can relate to you or can identify with you. You don't draw your strength from that person. If that's happening to you, then you're already in it. You're already in Jezebel's spider web, and you need to break out of that relationship as fast as possible. Um, here's another thing. Jezebel's a teacher. And uh, what that means, not only does she teach, but she'll explain everything you, every, she'll answer every question you have. She'll explain what the preacher was talking about, what the man of God said on the radio, on the television. She'll begin to explain it, explain it, explain it. And it's, it's another way that she builds in you. Because now, in order for you to, be, to, to know anything, you've got to go to her to, to get her side of the story or her opinion or what says Jezebel. And this is how she begins to build eunuchs bit by bit, little by little, little by little. And Jezebel will begin to make it feel like you can't even talk to God. You've got to get her approval first. This is something that Jezebel does. So we have to be very careful with this. I've seen I've seen people in churches where they have to go, they have to get Jezebel to okay it or to explain it. And they have these misplaced loyalties where they look to Jezebel, not to their own leaders in the church. And so this is the spider web of Jezebel, how she builds eunuchs. And, what, and in the process of building eunuchs, she'll suck your strength right out of you. Bit by bit, little by little, you find yourself weaker and weaker. And the only time you ever feel any strength is when you have her approval or she's around or it looks like she's approving what you're doing. Now... Let me just tell you some of the things that a eunuch would do because hopefully, and I, and I pray that you're not a eunuch, but you know what? It's possible that you've seen other people in your family or in your church that they're starting to fall prey to, to just become eunuchs. Now, here's the deal. One thing I found out about eunuchs is a eunuch is a eunuch is a eunuch. A eunuch is not strong. A eunuch has no strength of its own. A eunuch will always have to pull strength from somebody else. And one thing about Jezebel's eunuchs is that the eunuchs are, will not only um, submit to, uh, or I should say, uh, guard one Jezebel, but they'll guard every Jezebel in the whole church. Yes, and so we have to understand some of the eunuchs are also dangerous, okay? So we don't want anybody to become eunuchs because a eunuch cannot advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now here's one thing a eunuch will do. A eunuch will always guard the peace yes. of Jezebel. Yes. And so we see that many times where, you yes. know, someone in authority, someone has the ability to say no, begins to move in an area. So what do the eunuchs do? They get all freaked out about it. And what do they want to do? Instead of guarding the leaders of that right. ministry, they'll go and they'll, they'll start to guard the, uh, the Jezebels that are around that ministry. 
So we have to watch. So that's one of the signs of the eunuch. The next thing that eunuchs do is eunuchs like to guard the peace of Jezebel, and eunuchs have misplaced loyalties. They'll be more loyal to the eunuch, in, I mean, to the Jezebel in the church than they will be to the leaders in the church. Something's wrong with that picture. Here's another thing too: a eunuch, a eunuch is always looking for Jezebel for permission, permission to do this, permission to do that, permission to, you know, to uh, obey the pastor, for example, in the church, or to obey, uh, you know, your husband or your wife. See, that's not biblical and that's not correct. People that you, people that are eunuchs, they look to get Jezebel to approve everything yeah. about what's going on in her life. I mean, this is a really crazy thing, but it gets it gets it gets weird, perverted, and twisted as as people get further and further into this spider web of Jezebel's control. Another thing that eunuchs do is they make things hard. Uh, for example, uh, let's say there's someone in the church and that's in leadership and they begin to go and try to get things done in a particular department. Well, if there's a unit there, or, or more than one unit, they'll make it difficult to get anything done. So my point today is this. We have to, we have to understand that Jezebel knows how to create units. So we have to guard our hearts with all diligence, okay? We have to be careful who we let into our heart, okay? We don't want to let some Jezebel spirit come and grab a hold of some hurt and wound that we haven't laid on the altar yet, and we have to guard ourselves and not become eunuchs. Well, I really, I really hope that this has helped you today. Um, and if it has, please send me an email, um, office at jonasclark.com. Come over and visit us over on the website, www.jonasclark.com. And I pray that together we can stop the hindering influences of the Jezebel spirit in our lives and in our ministries. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Now, if that didn't say everything I said, and you can believe it because a white man said it. Half the time we don't believe us.